Hey everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this video, we're going to look at exponential growth models, and in the next video, we'll look at exponential decay models. But throughout, we'll be modeling data. So in this first video, we're going to look at how to model exponential growth. So there are several processes that occur in nature, such as population growth and radioactive decay, and numerous other applications can be modeled by exponential functions. That's the, what this entire section is about, modeling exponential functions. So we're going to model exponential functions by growth and decay. So we're going to focus on what do exponential growth and decay models even look like first. So we've already seen an example of exponential growth already, and this came up in terms of compound interest or continuous compound interest. This is a type of exponential growth function because over time, the balance of the account is growing exponentially. And so the accumulated balance, you are taking the original investment and multiplying by the compound interest rate. So the definition of an exponential growth or decay model, a mathematical model is called exponential growth or exponential decay. If the function of, is of this form, f of t equals a sub zero, or sometimes people call it a naught, times e to the kt exponent. Or if you replace f of t with a, which is more common with applications because a stands for the amount, you get this second form. a equals a sub zero e to the kt. Now you might be wondering what's the difference between growth and decay if it looks the same. Well, it depends on the k. k is positive then this function is growing, so it's an exponential growth function or growth model if the k is positive. The a sub zero or a naught stands for the original amount or sometimes people call this initial amount or the size of a population or amount of a substance when time equals zero. So don't confuse initial amount with time equals one. That would be one minute, one second, one year later. The initial amount is always when time equals zero. The A is the function, that's the output, and it depends on the amount of time that has passed. And the K is a number called the growth rate. So we'll talk about decay functions or decay models in the next video. So let's look at exponential growth. This graph on the left is a, an example of an exponential growth function or growth model. Function and model are interchangeably in this video. So exponential growth function, this occurs when K is positive. So the exponent, the K will be a positive number and it'll tell you that the amount is growing over time. The a sub zero is the initial amount. And this is when time equals zero. So notice that the initial amount is right on the y-axis or the vertical axis. And this is what an exponential function looked like earlier in the chapter. The function is growing exponentially over time. So notice that this function, as time increases, the population or the amount of a substance or the amount in a checking account or a bank account will grow indefinitely. So this is called uninhibited growth. So we'll look at exponential decay in the next video. So sometimes we need to use given data because the growth rate may not be given. So we will be using data in this next example to determine the growth rate K. So if we want to find the value of K, we need to use two data points. And then once we find the value of K, we can use the exponential growth function to make predictions based on the model. In our first example, we're going to look at the population of the United States. So the bar graph that's given below 
shows the population of the United States, which is in millions for the units, and it's given us the populations for five years, between 1970 and 2010. So the population of the United States is collected every 10 years by the, the Census Bureau, and it, they give us the years in, in millions in 1970, then 1980, then 1990, all the way to 2010 is the most recent that we have. After 2020 is over, we will be, uh, the United States Census Bureau is collecting information about the demographics of the United States. So 2020, the population of the United States will be released. The United States population was 203.3 million in 1970. And the most recent population that we have, as reported by the United States Census Bureau, was 308.7 million. So notice that we are only given information about two particular years in the bar graph. In 1970, the population was 203.3 million. So this is the year that we're interested in. And also the most recent population was 308.7, and that was in 2010. So let's use this information in the bar graph to represent them as ordered pairs or data points. It looks like the horizontal axis will represent the years. And the vertical axis is population in millions of the United States. So our two data points would be 1970, comma 203.3 million, and 2010, 308.7 million. However, notice that 1970 is the first population that we are interested in, but it's not the initial amount because it's 1,970 years after the vertical axis. Keep in mind that exponential growth functions, we want the initial amount to be the point on the vertical axis. So this is what's called relabeling the years. We want to relabel the years in such a way so that the first population that we have becomes the initial population. So relabel the years to be T is years after 1970. So we do this when, in, when we have incredibly large values for time and 1,970 years is incredibly large. So 1970 becomes zero because 1970 is zero years after 1970, but the population stays the same, 203.3 million. 2010 would be 40 years after 1970, so 40,308.7. So like I said, this is what's called relabeling the years or reinitializing the years because we're, in, we're dealing with incredibly large values for T. Now we're not. 0 and 40 is much more manageable. And for this first problem, we're going to be asked to find an exponential growth function. And we know what exponential growth functions look like. They're A equals A sub 0 or A naught the initial population, e raised to the kt exponent. And if this is growth, the k must be a positive number. So let's try first part of the problem. Find an exponential growth function that models the data for 1970 and 2010 for the population of the United States. So let's take the two points that we were interested in earlier. 0, 203.3 is standing for 1970 is 0. And uh, 40 is standing for 2010. It was 308.7 million people. Notice that since we relabeled or reinitialized the years, t equals 0 stands for the initial time. So no time has passed. 203.3 is the initial population. For our growth function, so this is when time equals zero, a sub zero is 203.3 million. So we already have 
part of the exponential growth function known. The a sub 0 will be 203.3 million. We just need to figure out what k is, which is the growth rate. So we are going to find an exponential growth function for the population between the years 1970 and 2010. So it looks like this so far. A equals 203.3 e to the kt exponent. Now notice that we've used the first point, the data point already, to find out the initial value. Let's use the other point to help us find out what the growth rate would be. So if the time is 40 years, the amount of the population is 308.7 million. So replace A with 308.7, and we can replace the T with 40. So 308.7 equals 203.3 E to the K, which we will find out in a second, and 40 is t. Notice that this becomes an exponential equation, and we've talked about those in the previous video. We want to solve for k, and k is the variable located in the exponent. That's what makes it an exponential equation. So if you have to review how to solve exponential equations, look at the previous video. The first step in solving is to isolate the exponential expression. So divide both sides of this equation by 203.3 to isolate the e to the 40k. So 308.7 divided by 203.3 equals e to the 40 times k power. So now on the right side, notice that we have base e raised to a power. Which type of logarithm makes the most sense to use? Natural log. So this is base e exponential expression. You want to use natural log on both sides. So take the natural log of 308.7 divided by 203.3. That's, that's the argument of the logarithm. Equals natural log of e to the 40 times k power. So why do we want to use natural log? Natural log and e are inverses of one another. And we know that natural log of e to a power is just the power. So this gives us natural log of 308.7 divided by 203.3 equals 40 times k. So if we want to solve for k to find the growth rate, divide by the coefficient 40. So k is natural log of 308.7 divided by 203.3, and then divide by 40. So notice that we did not round when we did 308.7 divided by 203.3. We want to keep as much accuracy as we can for the growth rate. So do not round until you get to the very end, after you have solved for k. So let's try entering this into the graphing calculator. So we have natural log of 308.7 divided by 203.3, close the parenthesis on the logarithm, and then divide by 40. So it's approximately 0 0.01. Now if we round the two decimal places, we lose a lot of accuracy in the growth rate. So let's keep 0 0.0104 as the growth rate. Zero point zero one zero four. So notice that k is really small, it's very close to zero, but it is a positive number. So that's why we have a growth function. And then speaking of the growth function, we entirely know what it looks like now. So to model the population of the United States from 1970 to 2010, population would be modeled by the function 203.3 times e to the k 0 0.0104 times t and t 
is years after 1970. So the number of years after 1970. And this is what's called an exponential growth function or growth model. Now the advantage of actually having an exponential growth model or growth function is now we can plug in or substitute in any value of t that we want and we can find out the amount of the population of the United States. So in part two, we're going to answer the question according to the model from the previous part, so our exponential growth model, when will the predicted population of the United States reach 350 million? So let's write down the exponential growth function from the previous part. So the growth function was a equals 203.3 e to the 0 0.0104 t and t was years after 1970. That may not seem like it's that important but it will come up in this problem. So notice that in this problem we have the amount a is 350 million but we do not know t because they're asking us to find when will the predicted population reach this amount. So this time the A is 350 million. So let's replace that in the function. 350 equals 203.3 E to the 0 0.0104 T. So notice that this becomes an exponential equation again because t is the variable and it's located in the exponent and we need to solve for t. So this should seem familiar compared to the last part of the problem because we're still solving for an exponent. Divide both sides by the 203.3 which was the initial population to isolate the exponential expression. We have 350 divided by 203.3, so again, do not round, just keep it as a fraction, equals e to the 0.0104t. Take the natural log on both sides, because we have base e, 350 divided by 203.3, equals natural log of e to the 0.0104t, and just like the last part of the problem, Natural log of e to an exponent is just the exponent, because natural log and e are inverses. And then you'll have natural log of 350 divided by 203.3 equals just the exponent, 0 0.0104 times t. And of course, divide by the coefficient to isolate the t. So t is exactly this answer. Natural log of 350 divided by 203.3 and then divide by 0 0.0104 which is approximately 350 divided by 203.3 close parenthesis on the natural log first then divide by 0 0.0104. And you'll find out that it's approximately 52.236 if we rounded the three decimal places. Now, what does this answer represent? It's time, and t was in years after 1970. So 52.236 years after 1970. So we did answer the question of the problem, when will the predicted population of the United States reach 350 million? It would be 52.236 years after 1970. However, the problem could have asked what year will the population reach 350 million? So be, be very careful on how the problem is posing the problem. If we want to know exactly what year this would be, take 1970 and add 52.236. 236 years. And this would be 
0.236 years. So it looks like approximately the year 2022 because it would be a quarter of the year into 2022. So the point I'm, I'm going to make is even if this was 0.8 years, do not round up. You are 0.8 of the year in 2022. So it's still the year 2022. You're not 2023 until it's 2023. Okay, so one important point that I want to make before we keep going is that in the previous example, we used two data points or two data values. They were for the population of 1970 and the population of 2010 to develop this exponential growth function or growth model. But notice that I kept saying it was a growth model for 1970 through 2010. If you change any of those two data points, we came up with 203.3 because that was the initial population in the year 1970. So if we changed and used 1980, 203 would no longer be relevant. We would have to use that population. In 1980, the population was 226.5, so that would be the initial population. And the 2010 was important because we used 1970 and 2010 to calculate the K. So if you change the years, the initial population will change, and so will the K. So be very careful. So if you use two different sets of years, that will change the exponential growth rate. All right, and then the last thing we're going to look at is what's called doubling time problems. So there are some problems in exponential growth models where you're asked to find out how long will it take before the population or the amount of a substance will double in number. Or you might be asked, what is the growth rate when you're dealing with doubling time problems? So here's how we're going to deal with those types. The growth rate K and the doubling time t are related by this formula. k times t must be equal to natural log of 2. This is only for doubling time problems. They have to be equal to natural log of 2 when you take k times t. If you know the doubling time, t, divide both sides by t and you get this formula. k equals natural log of 2 divided by t. So if you know the doubling time, this can help you find the growth rate, which is k. Take natural log of 2 and divide by the doubling time. However, if you know the growth rate but not the time, divide both sides by k and you get this second formula, which is t equals natural log of 2 divided by k. So if you know the growth rate, this can help you find the, the doubling time for the problem. So again, this only applies to doubling time problems for exponential growth functions. So let's try example three. Suppose that the population of the world is doubling every 57.8 years. What is the exponential growth rate? So in terms of this problem, we are given the doubling time, that is t, we know that, and we're asked to find the growth rate. So we're going to use this formula. k equals natural log of 2 and divide by t. So t is 57.8 years, that is the doubling time of the population of the world. So if you take natural log of 2 and divide by 57.8, you'll find out that the growth rate is 0.012. Notice that the k is positive, so this is definitely an exponential growth factor or growth rate. K equals 0.012. So again, keep in mind that this formula only applies when you are dealing with doubling time problems and trying to find the growth rate. Or if you know the growth rate for doubling time, you can find what is the doubling time itself. 
So this is a good place to stop about our discussion on exponential growth models. If you have any questions about the two examples that we did, please let me know. If you have any questions about any of the problems involving exponential growth in terms of the homework, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about exponential decay models.